beautiful creatures of the world, and welcome back to Coffee with Carrie Lynn. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Don't worry, I won't quit my day job. I sing out in the barn and the turkeys run me off, so <laughs> I know I can't sing. You don't have to make a comment about it. I know I ain't quit my day job, and I don't sing often, so here you go. It is a beautiful Valentine's Day in the crown of Maine on the Canadian border in the great white north. We're in the low 20s, but we have sun, and that sun is nice and warm and toasty. We do not celebrate Valentine's Day here on the homestead. Oh, nay, nay. We have never cele celebrated a Valentine's Day as a couple or as not a couple. I've known my husband for 41 years this June, so... We met when I was 11 years old. They moved in downstairs. We lived in the apartment upstairs and, and my husband's family lived, uh, they moved in downstairs. So uh, we grew up together. Yes, we did. And uh, I got cute. We had babies. We got hitched. And here we are 41 years later. That is it. And in those 41 years, never celebrated Valentine's Day. We did for the kids. We always bought the kids chocolates and a little bouquet of flowers and sent them off to school with their little Valentine cards. But him and I never celebrated it because I always felt there's 365 days of the year. Don't y'all come at me with no flowers and, and candies and all kinds of loving on the one day Mr. Hallmark told you to. And definitely don't buy me any flowers because they're up like three to four times what you should normally pay, which is okay because I get flowers once a week from himself, so... We're covered for that. I saw flowers at Walmart. $25 for the Valentine's flowers. Walk th three feet, literally three feet over. And the $9.99, 10 roses in the bouquet for $9.99. So there you go. So I always get the, I always get roses. He gives me roses once a week. So I'm not missing anything today. So don't anybody feel bad for me because this is how we do it. And I don't miss anything. Tomorrow, I will not be here on YouTube. Nay, nay. We will be uh, at the spa tomorrow. It's spa day. I'm going to get my little facial done. I'm going to cover up the gray, cover up the white. Uh, some people call it vanity. I call it pride. My, <laughs> if you know my, if you knew my grandmother Veronica, then you know. Um, I take after her. Some people said she was a very vain woman. It's just, for me, it's, it, I believe she, it was personal pride. And one of the things she always drilled into me was just because you got the marriage license and the man doesn't mean you can fall apart. It's not a license to start looking like, you know, a trash heap. You keep yourself up for your man. It's your duty. It's your obligation. And it is also his duty and his obligation to keep himself up and fit for you. So there you go. Um, my grandparents were beautiful people. I can't take credit because it's DNA. What can I say? My mom is in her 70s and she looks like she's in her late 50s, early 60s. And people often mistake us for sisters. So for that, I cannot take credit for, for my cuteness. Thursday, we are going to be up in the 40s. So I will be on my walk on Thursday for the first walk of the, of the, the winter. I haven't been out since the snow fell, but that's okay. We're going to do it on Thursday and I might take you guys with me. So that'll be kind of cool. Little, little things to do during the week. So what are we going to do on coffee talk today? What's the, what's the dish? The dish is UFOs. Now it's UFOs. Are you friggin' serious, man? So, oh God, I, I really, this, this, do they think we're that stupid? Yes, they do, actually. Um, there's information that came out on NORAD after the UFO shooting, uh, or, or shooting down of the UFOs, plural. One was a balloon, the rest were all UFOs, whatever. Uh, we are not that dumb. No, we're not. But on the heels of the UFO, uh, shooting the UFOs down, came the information that they were, NORAD was going to do defense drills over Washington, D.C. today between midnight and 2.30 a.m. I also read a report that it wasn't going to happen. So I don't know. There's conflicting reports. Go Google it up. See if it happens. See if it's going to happen. I don't know. I don't care. Because ladies and gents, we are living in a world filled with propaganda. You are being propagandized. Look over here while we do something over here. We are in times where it is very difficult to discern information. Absolutely. That's what happens when you're, when you're prop. We've always been propagandized just now. Doesn't it feel like things are falling apart like crazy? Like 
we're in a simulation and it's just like falling apart between the green lights from the satellite that came down over Hawaii it looked like the matrix was crumbling to uh, all this nonsense now with hot air balloons and weather balloons and UFOs and what the look over here while we do something over here so what do you do well my advice is take everything seriously but also with a grain of salt you got to play the game you got to play the game we all know that a war is coming we all know this we're not we're not daft you can see what's going on in the world you pay attention you read the newspaper even if you watch mainstream media you know what's going on over in europe you know what's potentially going to go on in the pacific so, uh, you know, you need to take things with a grain of salt and understand that a war is coming and you need to prepare for the coming shortages and price hikes because with war becomes shortages and rising prices. You need to live in your reality, your reality, not the reality everybody's painting for you, but your reality. There is what happens in the world right now that's happening at a distance your life is your here and now okay it's just like the economy they tell you that there was no inflation they told you that for years and you're no, no there's no inflation don't worry about it and yet you saw things rising at the market it took them a while to admit but you saw it in your personal economy your reality okay your reality that there was something amiss at the store and things were going up and you were not being able to afford certain things. So you were no longer buying certain things or you were contemplating getting a part-time job while they were telling you there was no inflation going on. We need to pay attention to our personal realities. What's going on in Europe? Yes, that's a very bad thing. I feel very terrible for the people that are living through that, but that's not on my doorstep. Does it affect my life? Yes, it does from a distance. Absolutely affects my life from a distance. But right here and now, my personal reality at my doorstep, I have to worry about my farm, my family, what I want to do tomorrow, you know, how many chores I want to do. Do I want to sit and spin today? Do I want to knit a sock? I don't know. This is my personal reality. I can still feel bad for what's going on in the world. I can still understand what's going on in the world. I can still read the news. I can still gain perspective of the world at a distance. But my personal reality is I get up today. I go do my chores. I'm going to clean my house. I, I'm going to spin some wool, perhaps in a sock. I'm going to play with my farm animals, you know, give them some care, some little TLC, Getting ready for my appointments tomorrow at the spa. It's Valentine's Day. It's a beautiful day. We've also got to start following our gut instinct. Everybody has a fight or flight sense in them. You know. You know when you're walking down the street and somebody walks by you, you get a feeling that either they're a good person and you don't pay no never mind, or you get that little tingle that they're a little shady and that you better put your head on a swivel and start paying attention so you get out your little get out your little mirror your little compact make make believe you're powdering your nose and you watch that sucker in the mirror make sure he ain't backtracking and coming at you you need to start listening to your instincts and using your critical thinking skills it's the only way you're going to sift out the information going on the propaganda it's the only way you can do it and do not panic over anything you see read or hear very very important do not panic Thirdly, how we're going to fight the propaganda is we are going to make plans for our future. Listen, let's talk real talk here. After every major war, there was a future. You are here in this time as proof of that. You are proof that nothing so atrocious can wipe the world out of love, hope, and dreams. So you need to shape your future no matter what happens over there. No matter what's flying above us, you need to shape your future. And lastly, don't overconsume the propaganda. I had a, I have a picture on my phone I want to show you guys. It was a screenshot I took from uh, the internet. This is the nonsense that they're doing. Absolutely. I hope you can see this. This little map here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's detailing the UFO sightings. So 
Um, we had a balloon on February 4th that was shot over a tiny spy balloon that was shot out of the sky over the South Carolina coast. Okay, that was that started it off. Then on Fe February 11th, Saturday, February 11th, they have a little uh, UFO icon on this little map that I just showed you. Also, we have a space alien head icon over northern Canada on the uh, Saturday, the 11th. Something else that was taken out of the sky. Also, a little alien head icon over the northern Alaskan border on February 10th. These are all UFOs. Oh, it's cylindrical. Oh, it's got no propulsion. It's driven on helium. And then on Sunday, February 12th, we have an actual balloon that was over Lake Huron. Now, don't overconsume the propaganda, guys. Enjoy your life. Enjoy the little moments. Enjoy your family. Carve out more time in your busy schedule to have fun. I'm not going to worry about aliens and UFOs. Because whatever is going on over here, and oh, look at this, look up over here, look up, they're doing something else over here. And I know this because I am well versed in history. I am especially well, well versed in World War II history. Uh, my grandfather was a POW. He spent two years in Salag 17 after he was shot out of the sky in his, uh, he was the radio man. And uh, his plane was shot down and they got him. The Germans got him and they sent him to Stalag 17 and he was there for over two years. He was out of commission until he was liberated. So there you have it. And I am very well versed in, he, he taught us very well and told us many, many stories about the propaganda of the time and different aspects of the war. And it just blossomed something in me that uh, when we had uh, history courses and stuff, I was, I became very knowledgeable in World War II issues. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to worry too much about the aliens. I'm not going to worry too much about the UFOs. I'm not going to worry about the matrix crashing, uh, the simulation going down. What I worry about is why they're using this like blatant idiocy nonsense as a distraction using my critical thinking skills why are they doing this to us why are they treating us like we're complete idiots i don't know but every day is a new day and every day I'm going to wake up. The world is going to do what the world's going to do. The economy is going to do what the economy is going to do. And I'm going to wake up and I'm going to live my life. Going to live my life in between all this stuff. And you guys got to do the same thing. Carpe diem, beautiful creatures of the world, because nobody promised you a tomorrow. Peace out. Stay strong. Have fun. Live your life. Love you guys.